in this video i am going to give explanation on can tp that is flow control in unified diagnostic service before that if you would like to watch our videos in a sequence you can find the same pdf file in the description there is a, a google drive uh, path has been given in the description you can make use of it if you would like to share uh, join in any of our uh, uh, social media says you are always welcome to have a technical discussions so this is can transport layer or flow control yeah before that you can just pass and you can zoom the details about our upcoming uh, unified diagnostic service uh, course that is from the level moderate level to expert level if all the details has been given here and the enrollments is 100 maximum it's around 80 has been reached remaining 20s is there and the course starts on november 7th okay or everything has been given here so you can pass it and zoom it okay yeah can protocol that is uh, before entering into the can tp understand the can protocol of course osi layer is a uh, you know in all in our communication uh, all our protocols occupies its own place similarly can protocol occupies the place like physical layer data link layer and application layer so these are all the three layers that is in physical layer, it's a can low speed and high speed that is high speed can and low speed can in data link layer it is a can 2.0 then in application layer it is a cal can if you if you are a core uh, can protocol then it will be only the first two layers that is physical and data link layer if you're going for the cal can then you can consider as a application layer similarly the can tp that is here the can protocol and tp here it occupies so added with these three layers see the transport can tp occupies the transport layer that is the fourth layer all right so this is the main uh, difference and uh, relation between the can protocol and tp in osi layers so can tp is a fourth layer all right so next is can frames it's a very short see the source i have taken is wikipedia it's very simple to understand we have uh, four frames that is a single frame wherever you are sending only one frames or wherever you are receiving one frame is a single frame uh, then first frame consecutive frame then flow control frame so these are all the enumeration values that is a code or indications zero means a single frame that is nothing will be there one if one is there then it's a first frame if two is there, it's a second frame then three is a, it's a flow control all right then four up to four to fifteen is a reserve maybe in upcoming versions of the uds uh, document you may get a number of uh, you know the frames it depends so the main part uh say uh, if you if you want to go through the can tp or a uh, flow control you may get a number of sources so i don't want to waste the time here for and make you understand about the basics if you understand the request and response frame for flow control there is a can tp you can definitely do reverse engineering so that's why i have directly switched into the request and response frame you can just please be attentive in this one slide if it's done i think it's completely done okay so let's start with so this is a uh, ecu sorry this is a tester side and this side is a ecu side here uh, you can send some 10 0 ones uh, default session uh, then you will get the responses 50 0 1 okay so the first step uh, it's not mandatory because by default it will be in default session so i'll straight directly pitch into this 22 22 is a service called as uh, read data by identifier all right so in this 22 you have, you have written ff and 1b this is data identifier see here i have given 03 is a pca length because here three bytes of data is being using 22 is one byte ff is another byte then 1b is a last byte so three bytes so here the three bytes the pca has been given 22 is a service id that is um, read data by identifier so then ff and 1b is a did that is data identifier all right so this is a request we are sending as a tester we are sending then the response from the uh, ecu is 102862ff1b if you decode this i mean if you just uh, uh, make if for uh, if you are a beginner or a middle level uh, of the unified diagnostic service you can easily understand see 62 is positive response right so for the 22 you are getting the 62 ff and 1b is the data identifier so these three bytes is clear here what is 10 and 28 so this is what in the previous slide i have i said you 
for the first frame it is mentioned one okay it's a code enumeration value see the first frame of a longer multi-frame message packet used when more than more than six or seven bytes of data it's not within uh, within the one frame so more than one one frame the first frame contains a length of full packet along with the initial data okay so let me clear you the same see here one zero it means this indicates the this is uh, this sent by ECU that is we have to understand this right so one zero here the prefix is one zero so here one zero indicates this is the first frame then here two eight so it's a hex value okay so hex value of the 28 is around exactly 40 okay then these three yes you already know so this is what i have mentioned here 10 0 is a indicates first frame yes then 28 is the pca length see here uh, because of these first two bytes as a tester we have to understand we should send flow control so this is what we are saying so uh, let me complete this 10 indicates the first frame 28 indicates the pca length that is a hex so 40 actually in decimals of 40 then 62 is a positive response ff1b is a requested did okay whatever we have requested here the same has been acknowledged so here the second step is over we have received the positive response with the prefix 10 and 28 so 28 is is not common okay it may be if say for example instead of 40 bytes of uh, data it may be 41 bytes of data so that did say uh, just imagine you are requesting some uh, some information from the ecu the the particular information is ff and 1b so did uh, even you can consider the win number so win number is a 17 bytes of data for the 17 if you consider so for win number it may be some uh, f1 or 80 something so if you request f1 80 then win number is definitely 17 bytes of data it is more than 8 bytes even for that it will send the particular 17 bytes of data hex value will be sent here but the 10 will be constant to indicate as it is a first frame all right so uh, 10 then the uh, data length okay what are the data is about to uh, come the particular data length will be given here in the hex value then positive response follow that date so two steps over the third step three zero so as soon we 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 have uh, received this 10 0 and uh, some other whatever the pca length is we have to send the flow control frame so this is a flow control frame this three indicates there is a three zero indicates the flow control frame okay so zero zero it's a fc there is a flow control flag then again next to zero zero is a block size then last zero zero is a separation time for this we may have another uh, video it's like uh, uh, the flag the flow control flag may be have to wait or if you see if you find this is more than eight bytes then you do, you are not ready to accept this then you can simply reject this you can uh, you can you can just uh, abort the operation for that you have to give zero two i'm sorry you have to give one zero it is in a hex value you have to give all right so zero two is a hex value so it's not a binary right so zero two you have to give it, it will abort or if you want to wait some time you have to give zero one so uh, that's what this three zero zero concept i'll give in another video but for better understanding you just go in a flow first you're requesting then you are got a response and then again you are requesting because this ecu gave you the first frame and this this pca length also more than eight bytes right so you have to give 30 zero zero so there is fc flag then block size then separation time you are giving this request that is you are you gave the flow uh, flow control frames to the ecu so that now ecu got the flow control so what ecu will do is he will send the consecutive frames next level of frames see 21 it will start so this is what again we have seen here here two see three the flow control frame is three the response from the receiver acknowledge the first uh, frame segment so this is what we have discussed see the consecutive frame is two a frame containing subsequent data for the multi-frame packet so here what i mentioned is see all these 40 bytes or data so these are the subscreens so two two one it's a uh, consecutive frame the first frame in the consecutive frame so here from seven bytes of data again 22 seven bytes of data so as i said it's a 40 byte so you no know, the frames is 25 that is five frames 35 then here 36 37 38 39 40 so 40 data 40 bytes of data has been sent by the ecu so this is what here 21 till 26 to indicate the consecutive frame so this is a overall concept of the flow control or can tp and uh, you may aware that the can tp supports 4095 bytes of data yes of course all these data will be sent in this manner all right and uh, in this like the the thing whatever we missed is this thing we have missed because here the 
zero one is to weight, uh, zero two is to about. This we have to understand. Then here the block size again. We have a uh, size number of block size that also we can give our uh, input. Then separation time between between every frame. Uh, okay, so that also we can do. Apart from that, um, yeah, that's it. As a tester said, uh, we are requesting and uh, we are requesting for a data. Say uh, in a re in a in a reverse way. Say for example, if you want to write more than eight bytes of data, then what you have to do? So very simple. Similarly, I have to write. So here I will give the same zero three instead of two two. I'll give two e. That is a write data by identifier. Then ff one b the same byte. I'm uh, same data identifier. I'm going to write. Okay. Um. Then what ECU will give you the responses? ECU will give um the response as sixty two. Uh, sorry, six e ff one b. All right. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We have to write in the in a in a such a way that uh sorry that that's what i was thinking to give you in the next video but just i'll give you as a overview when you are writing you have to use this one first frame because you are not see here it is nothing is that is zero zero means a single frame but we are going to write multi frame so what we have to do is i'll write one zero instead of um uh zero three i'll write one zero two eight so if i write one zero two eight two e ff one b what ec will do is ec will understand after looking at the first frame ec will understand and he will send the flow control so in the reverse way he will send 300000 he will send so whatever the our developers pro has been programmed then we'll get the uh, response after then we have to write these many data so we have to prefetch in our uh, blocks in our uh, ig blocks or in a capital script we have to prefetch then we have to send it so once all the data has been written successfully you will get the responses um 036 e ff 1b that's it so that may be our another next video if you really interested to learn about the uh, right data identifier all right i hope you learn something in this video if yes hit a like and uh, regarding this course that is complete curious so it's, uh, that's what you can just uh, spend your time to read what are the contents in this uh, initially we have shared this in our whatsapp group in that whatsapp group only we got around 70 to 80 enrollments so maybe the remaining 30 the viewers if you're really interested to join you can and uh, please uh, and uh, read all these then you can have an inquiry because the same questions then again i have to i'll just highlight these uh, things and i'll show you so please uh, read this if you're really interested Mm, yeah we'll get back to you in the next video until then bye take care